Hi everyone, for our 4-H science activity now, we're gonna take a look at worm behaviors. And this is a really simple activity that you can do in your own backyard, at school, just about anywhere. All you need is worms and a few everyday materials. So to describe the activity, we'll just look at our materials. What we're gonna explore is how worms react to light. And to do that here, I have a very simple shoebox. And in this shoebox, I've cut a hole. This hole is where we're gonna shine our light. And so you can use just about any kind of flashlight, just make sure that it's uh, not a pin light, you know, something big enough that when you shine in here, it's gonna distribute a lot of light through the box. So we open our box and take a look inside. We'll see that I've done a couple things in here. First of all, I've lined the bottom with some uh, old sandwich bags that I just cleaned up and reused. And that's because when we're working with worms, we want to make sure that we have a damp place for them to, uh, to stay. So that way the sandwich bags will protect this from the moisture and we can reuse it over and over. And you can just use something like a paper towels, you could put old newspapers in there, shred it up, even soil would be okay down there. But we really want to make sure we keep it uh, moist. Because when we're working with animals, even worms, insects, we want to make sure that we treat the animals with respect and that we're very humane to them. We don't want to damage these uh, creatures or kill them while we're doing the experiment. So what I would do is just wet this, wet the paper towel in, in water, you know, warm water, not hot or cold. And then I'm going to slide it under here. And when we do the experiment with the, with the kids, we're going to really get that nice and covered. The next thing you want to do is just slide an insert in this box. So this is uh, just a piece of cardboard that I cut that would, so it'll fit. You can also use a black construction paper. So we're going to slide it in the middle and we want to leave enough space so that a pencil or a worm can move through here. The reason that we're doing that is because when we close it, we're now going to have a light side divided from a dark side. And we're going to put our worms in here, shine a light in, and see what they do. Do they stay in the light? Or do they our behavior change based on the light and do they move to the dark side? So let's do that with the kids and see what happens. An important part of science is observing. So I want you to look at these worms and really explore what makes them different. Where do you see body parts that are different from one the other? Where do you see different colors? How does the worm move around when it's on your paper towel? Really notice the little details about your worm because they're really pretty amazing. You want to see what's happening if the worms yeah. are moving? Yeah. Let's see if any mo worms move to the other side. Oh, oh, oh. oh yeah, look at that. I can't see. You guys see? That guy didn't like the light. <laughs> no, they didn't like it. He even went under the paper towel. <laughs> wow. A few of them decided to go into this area. Why do you think they went over to the corner here when the light was pointing right there? Well, well they anything. move. And when they're no, dark, they don't really bubble. move that Let me see. Yeah. Great, so we saw how much fun kids had exploring the worm's reaction to light. And we saw that worms move to the dark side when they're placed in a lot of light. So there's a lot of different activities you can do with worm behavior or, or insect behavior in general. So here's a couple more really simple ones. This is one where we can explore how worms react to moisture or to dryness. And so I simply take a paper towel, you could spray or pour just a little mild water you know, warm, not hot or cold on here. And then we lay the worms in the dry area and we'll see if they'll move to the wet area or you could do the opposite way. You could lay them in the wet area and see if they stay or move to the dry area. And get kids to predict what they think will happen and then they can make that exploration for themselves. Another thing we can do is look at how worms react to temperature. So here I just have some warm and some cool water and we just take a Q-tip or a little piece of paper towel and we can just kind of gently tap the worm and see how it reacts. Now I'm not using a real worm here, I have just a little model worm. So anytime you're working with animals like worms, insects, arthropods, um, it's really great for kids. I mean, they're in their backyard. Kids can go outside and turn over a log, look under a rock, look in the corner of their house and they're likely to find some little creature moving around. So when you're working with kids, 
and they're exploring worms, arthropods, other kind of animals like that, you wanna have a lot of good resources on hand. So for example, here's a worm poster. Um, this shows the life cycle of worms. You can also have like uh, worm anatomy guides, uh, field guides, um, whatever's handy, uh, because kids are gonna come and ask a lot of different questions. And as the volunteer leader teaching this, you don't have to know all the answers. An important part of science inquiry is helping kids do research, helping kids discover those answers for themselves. So don't ever feel uh, shy or bashful if you don't know the answer. Say, you know, that's a really good question. Let's go do some research and find out. So you wanna make sure you ask materials that allow you to do that. So go outside and find some worms and have fun doing science inquiry. Thanks. Thank you.